I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. I don't know why I say that though, quite that way, but I always do. Anyway, Kara Street is here with us, and we're still in St. George and just loving our experience here. And this is such a sweet lady, and I sure appreciate you coming. Well, and thank you. You actually helped organize this a little bit, and we've put on our website the fact that we're interested in maybe going to other cities and doing the same thing. All we need is a little space, and uh, we'll do all the technical work, and we just need a few people to interview. So awesome. We appreciate you helping uh, organize this here in St. George. So well, thank you. Much. Yeah. Thank you. So where were you born? I was born in Provo City, Utah County, oh you know, Happy Valley. Happy <laughs> Valley, where are your folks, LDS? Yes, they yeah. were, and all my family around me was brothers and sisters Did I you? had two brothers yeah. two older brothers yeah. they were we were all LDS went to church went to church and went to primary all learned all did the all primary songs and oh yeah young women and all yes. that stuff and we did all of that yeah my two older brothers uh, you know we were all in it and everything and yeah. then but then when my parents went through the temple I was 10 years old. Oh, do you remember going in and being sealed then? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I do. Yeah. So I was the youngest and then but my one older brother that's only a year older than me uh -huh. was able to go, but my oldest brother wasn't able to go at that time because he was deemed not worthy. Oh my goodness. And I even to be sealed. Even to be sealed. I mean, not to go through the temple, just to go in and kneel down mm -hmm. and be sealed as a family. Forever. Right, right. He wasn't and he would, found. He didn't allow him in there. Yeah, he was 16 at the time, something like that. 15, 16. It just, just wasn't well, whatever, and and just wasn't allowed. Oh, that must have been devastating to mom and dad. It was, and I really feel like that was kind of the beginning. I'm sure there was other things. Maybe we yeah. had a very awesome life. Yeah. Uh, my dad built and raced dune buggies back then, so we traveled a lot racing dune buggies, and we yeah. were close as a family. Yeah. So then to have this one brother not be able to come in with us, it just, I think that started the tearing apart of our family. Oh, and then that caused pro real problems then. Mm -hmm. I've never yep. heard that before, to be honest, because they aren't going through the temple, they're not doing work for anybody else, or even for themselves, they're just being wow. sealed to mom and dad. I, I don't understand that. That must have been. Well, I didn't either. Anyway, <laughs> and I don't think he understands either yeah. or did. You know. So, so. Uh, you go through. You do seminary and. Did you you know, seminary? I did two years of seminary, and then I wasn't getting the best grades. I know. Sorry, <laughs> mom. Uh, Slu sloughing maybe a little I, I too much. I sloughed seminary and. <laughs> I mean, that's about the only way you can fail, right? I mean, as long as you breathe in there. Right. Here, so. <laughs> but at that time, they started the program where you couldn't get a credit right around mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. So you used to be able to get a credit. Okay. Well, now you couldn't, and I needed all the credits I to, could to get. Graduate, yeah. Yes, okay. sad, I know. So yeah. I, I just quit going to seminary. Yeah. By that time, my parents were divorced, and so nobody really mm -hmm. cared. <laughs> oh, oh. Did you have a testimony of the church? I mean, you, you grew up in it, you just, just figured the church was true, I suppose? Yeah, I remember bearing my testimony a few times as a yeah. teenager, yeah. just kind of saying the words, but I didn't really focus or know what I was really saying. <laughs> I just said the words like everybody else did. They figure eventually it'll stick, I think, when we Yeah, <laughs> I was trying to figure out, is it me I'm trying to convince or the rest of the world? I wasn't sure. <laughs> Talk myself into it. <laughs> exactly. I think there is a little bit of that, isn't there? Exactly. So what happens after uh, high school? Well, I had met a fellow at, from Heber, and mm. we decided to get married. 
So I got married, graduated in May, and got married in September after high school. Very young lady then. Huh? Got married in the temple. And what temple was that? The me? Jordan River Temple. Oh yeah. So. Oh my goodness. What did yeah. you think of that experience? I ask that all the time, but. Uh, you know, you think of going through the temple? I was a little, well, I hadn't heard much about it. Yeah, nobody does. So I, I don't remember a lot about it. I just remember my mom couldn't come because she wasn't okay. temple worthy then. It. And then my dad and I had gotten in a tiff before I got married. So none of my family was there oh in the goodness. temple. And so that kind That's of kind always... Of an empty feeling, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Especially where you're considering going in there for time and all eternity as a family. And exactly. Everything. So my, my new husband's, all, all his family was there because okay. they were all temple worthy and all okay. of that. So they were able to come, yeah. but my new stepsister couldn't come. And I was close with some of my new step siblings yeah. after my dad had remarried. I know that was kind of a backup, but anyway. I know anyway. You, you do that. Now looking back on it, it seems strange, doesn't it? That it has all those yeah. Limitations and restrictions, it doesn't. I don't remember anything great about like, you know, the ceremony part yeah. of the of the wedding part. I was like, well, <laughs> where's the part where we say this and that? <laughs> yeah. like, just kind of kneel there and they say it over you and you just say yes or something. There was just so much talking yeah. before, you yeah. know, the guy was just talking, talking, <laughs> and I don't even know what he said. So what happens after that? You, were you active then in the church still? Uh, I'm, I was. And different things. I we moved to Heber, which is in a small town just sure. up Provo Canyon. Right. So I moved from. I'd lived 18 years in Utah County, and then moved to Heber. Yeah. So we had our first child a couple years later, and I was mostly going to church. My husband didn't really like to go after that, mm. so I was keeping up the facade of uh, for the, the Mormon life. <laughs> And so we had three boys, mm. and just I, think I you just mentioned you were a Cub Scout leader. I was yep. Cub Scout, did primary teaching, Sunday oh, yeah. school. Oh. But my husband just never really supported me. Never really came. He just never went back. I only went back to the temple a couple of times, weddings and a couple things. That seems so common to hear but, that. Yeah. yeah, and my husband at the time was very controlling. Mm. Kind of abusive and controlling in, you know, emotionally and... In a patriarchal order sort of a way, uh -huh. you know I mean, took, took the priesthood seriously that way. Right. Even though he wasn't Even active. though, he, yeah, so yeah. It, was, it was really confusing life. And I just, just skirted over everything and masqueraded everything and... Another interesting feature of, of the church and it's <laughs> the teachings and stuff. Huh? I lived a very fake life. How long did that go life? on? 17 yeah. years. Oh my goodness. I was married 17 years yeah. and and it was all like that. So the, the entire marriage was. Now at this point did you ever question the church as being the true church? The only true church? You know I didn't yeah. at the time because I didn't really know what to question. Yeah. Because you were just doing all the duties and all the things you needed to do to possibly go to the celestial kingdom. Right. So I didn't really understand the biblical part, or I didn't know what to question. I had no idea what to even question. Yeah, and any problems were probably because you were falling, not doing all you should, or did you feel that somewhat? Right, right. Yeah. I was just kind of. Or people weren't doing what they were supposed to be doing. I yeah, guess. and I and I made my mistakes too sure. in my life and my marriage. Sure. We're all sinners, but right. I never heard that term either. No, we don't. We don't <laughs> say that, do we? <laughs> I just thought, well. I must be perfect sometime and get to go to heaven at some point. I don't know. In the millennium or something. I never could figure say. out when. But yeah. <laughs> so what happens next? You. So we divorced in 2001, mm. and he was continuing to be abusive after we divorced oh in an emotional way. So I needed to move. So I did move to Richfield for a little bit. Oh, from here. For a year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Took my boys and moved to Richfield. Wow. And then my oldest son stayed in Heber. He had gotten diabetes, mm. and he it was really rough for him to leave at 15 years old okay. to move with me. But I was told by an abuse counselor to move mm. away from him. And so that, that break kind of helped us 
deal with divorce yeah. and things like that. Were you active in Richfield then in the church? I was not. Right when I got divorced, I just I just didn't want to do anything with God or religion. Really? I was just like, I'm just done with all this. I'm just done. I don't know what I want, yeah. but I'm just done with religion. Mm, so I did, did nothing. How long did that last? I was single. Just the year that you were there? Or? No, I was single for four years. Okay. And so I moved to Richfield. I swore I'd never move back to Heber, but my son was having some struggles with his diabetes. Mm. And I, by that time, my ex was moving on and going to get married after a year. So, you felt so like I moved back was, to Heber. Okay. In moving back to Heber, that's when I, I well, I started dating my husband that I'm married to now. Yeah. So that's kind of why. I, did the Richfield and Heber thing well, right, you know. Right. But so for three more years, when I married my new husband, we didn't even talk about God, religion, nothing. What was he? He was LDS as a child. He did. But had left. S- he life. lived in Altamont, which is a very small town. Right. Very small town. So there was no options for him up there. Right. And his mom and his family was, his mom really wasn't deep rooted in it. So he just did primary and a few things, but when he got, older, got yeah. married to his first wife, he probably went five times and then on he occasion. Was just kind of inactive. Yeah, so okay. he didn't really care, yeah. and he wasn't deep rooted. He didn't have a testimony. He he really didn't know a lot of this stuff that we found out later. Yeah. So <laughs> what happens to change things after a few years? Well, so Dale and I had gotten married, and we were in Mapleton at the time. We had moved from Heber to Mapleton, and his father lived at St. George, this beautiful place we're at right now. (laughs) Yes. And I was very close with his father. Oh. We were very close, and one day he passed away suddenly, Mm. and I didn't know God, didn't know a whole, just didn't know much. Really impacted you, the death then. Yep. I I literally shook my fist at God and said, why did you take him of all people? You know, didn't understand life and death. Right. So I was just like, I was so mad at God. Like, why did you take him? <laughs> and it was not pretty. No. So I just, just didn't even know what to do with anything then. So I was just this puddle of mess for a while. You weren't drawn back to the church since that's all you'd really known? No. No. I really wasn't. Yeah. I just, I just, if anything, it probably made me worse. Oh. I find a lot of people leave Mormonism <laughs> become atheist. Oh, yeah. Um, and I'm surprised so I it didn't. Isn't, it isn't surprising then for me to hear the, or the, you know, the audience to hear you say that because it mm-hmm. happens so much. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised I didn't yeah. become atheist yeah. because I didn't want church, didn't want God, religion. Yeah. But I didn't know what it was. And now you're mad. And now I'm mad. Yeah. Now I'm like, ah. So, <laughs> so then I just, we just did nothing for another year goes by. And then my father, who was in the bishopric at the time, yeah. he passed away. Oh, boy. So one year later, the day we were moving to St. George, he passed away. My goodness. So he, he had gotten leukemia, and yeah. but wasn't ill, just having a treatment. Oh. He got a staph infection and died of the yeah. staph infection in the hospital. But so, <laughs> so now I moved to St. George. Yeah. After the funeral and all of that, we get to St. George. And within about a month, I was just, you know, trying to reel in losing two fathers. Yeah. Both of our fathers are gone. And yeah. then I'm like, hmm, really? <laughs> So this is when I asked my neighbor, Kathy. Well, my my neighbor, Kathy, in St. George. I wondered when she entered the picture, so here we are. Well, I knew her for years, and my husband knew her and her husband for a lot of years before that, but she had lived on the corner. She lives on the corner where we Mm -hmm. still live now, in St. George, but she had left the church, but she didn't really want to tell me why, because she had lost all her friends because she was deep in the church, oh. active when she left in her neighborhood. Okay. And so when she left the church, she lost all her friends. Okay. So here I come and move in next door, and she was afraid to tell me. She had a lot of fear. And now so- Now had she become Christian? She had become Christian. Oh, she had. She left the church, and there's a few parts of it I don't really know. Well, we'll have even to meet her stay. sometime, but yeah. I wish she would have come. <laughs> But she, she's amazing, and so yeah. 
she said, well, and she gave me this video, and it was Bible versus Book of Mormon. I mm -hmm. thought, oh, great, now I gotta watch this video. <laughs> you know, my attitude was so like, uh, religion. <laughs> oh, this attitude. So I watched it one day, yeah. and I called my husband in, and I said, you have to watch this video. Right then and there, I said, I knew it wasn't true. I knew it, <laughs> and now I know why. Yeah. Which, I, I was just trying to reel in all well, of that. What was the big message for you there? It was that these people had been Mormon, yeah. so these were ex-Mormons that created this video. They'd gone to Israel, they did all this research into the lack of artifacts. For the Book of Mormon. For the Book of Mormon and the Bible, there was like zero for the, the Book, Book of Mormon. Mormon. And lots for the And Bible. here's all this stuff. Yeah. And so I was like, what? So I thought, how can I believe that when there's nothing? Yeah. So I stood in my kitchen that day and I said, then I have to take the Bible or the Book of Mormon, I've got to throw one of them away. Because they showed the contradictions. Yeah. When you have a contradiction, one of them is a truth and one is a lie. You can't have two truths and two lies if they contradict. Right. So I, was like, I thought, well, I have to throw one of these in the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I can't live with myself and have this contradiction even though I didn't understand yet right. a lot of this stuff. Right. So I said, well, I don't want the Book of Mormon anymore. I, I want to know what's in this Bible. So you started a journey there. But right? how do you, here's, it's this thick. What do you, <laughs> what do, you do with that? Yeah. So Kathy, right. <laughs> she said, well, I go to this Calvary Chapel. She made it really casual. Like, well, I go to the, because she knew I really didn't want to go to a church. Yeah. Because I was tired of the church, right? the way that the church does their <laughs> the church. church. I didn't like it. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'll go one time. Yeah. Like, give I'm, it one I'm shot. I've only given it one shot. That's all. That's all. Yeah. I'll go once. And I invited my husband because I thought, you know, this is a personal thing. And he I went. think God is a personal thing. Mm -hmm. And he said he'd go. And I was shocked. Okay. I was amazed. Yeah. And so we drove over together. We went over to Calvary Chapel and walked in, and they have, <clears throat> they have the live music. Yeah. And I was like, ooh, am I in the right place? Like, this is weird. Yeah. The live music just kind of freaked me out a little bit at first, but I liked it. Yeah. But I didn't know if I should like it. <laughs> <laughs> should I like it? <laughs> and the message was Rick Nehrud is our pastor. Yeah and he was teaching in Hebrews. I had no idea. In Hebrews was a lot of information about the priesthood right. and the Melchizedek. Yeah. And I thought, wow, what? I was like, learning new things. I'm like, yeah. okay, wait. So he's teaching opposite of what I've always known about yeah. priesthood and all of the priesthood stuff, but he's teaching from the Bible. So there must be some truth to this. Yeah. So, wow. Oh, that's terrific. So when we, I'll never forget, when we drove out of there that day, our eyes were this big and our mouths were dropped open in the car. And I was like, wow, I want to come back. I want to come back to this church. <laughs> and I want to know more and I want to learn more. Oh, that's awesome. Right that, that day. Now you were telling me too about some Wednesday activities that happened. What was that oh, real yes. quick? Yes. So. In Calvary Chapel, they, we do Sunday and Wednesday, Bible study on both. The pa pastor teaches yeah. the Bible Sundays and Wednesdays. And Wednesdays, for some reason, my husband couldn't attend, so I would go with some Kathy and a few other ladies. And the music would start, and the, the worshiping, the music was touching me so much. About four weeks in a row, I didn't know if I should even go back because I would cry so much. I'd go to the bathroom to try to compose myself, and I'd come back and I'm still crying. I'm like, you just, what is happening to me? You've never worshiped that way before, right? I had not, yeah. I had not. So just that deep worship, and I remember there were some words up on the screen. All about Jesus and God. And it said something about my sin is up there, and I'm like, my, you know, Christ gave his life for my sin, and I could almost see my sin up on the screen, like, yeah. there it is, right in front of my face. <laughs> And, and he paid for it. Yeah, yeah, and since then I do actually the words. Yeah. <laughs> I've done the words for nine years up on the screen oh, since then. Okay. I do the, up yeah. in the sound room, we yeah. do the. Yeah. the so I call myself the words girl. <laughs> 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 so 
So ever since then, the, my sin but was But you like, just didn't feel like you could keep going back because all you did was cry over Right, but worship. finally, I finally, it just, it just really, it must have been the born again moment. I don't know, I just really, it's like this, this is the real deal. This is, this is the real God, this is the real deal. Um, and just. Had, had you ever understood grace before? Oh no, no. <laughs> and you felt you were able to be forgiven or know that they were, all those sins were paid for? That, right. That's a great feeling, isn't it? A freedom and a, a kind of a, take all that bondage off of us that we right. carry around as Mormons. <laughs> I had never heard that I was a sinner. Yeah, no. <laughs> now I realized and I can grasp that I'm a sinner yeah. by this, you know, by this time starting to learn the biblical parts and yeah. learning what was wrong in Mormonism and that time so type of thing. But have a more of a thirst for the Bible now? Oh, absolutely. I that, terrific? that first one for one year, I was just, I couldn't get my hands on enough of Mormon stuff and Bible stuff. Just because I wanted to really know the, the differences. Bad news and the good news. So I kept reading books and reading books, and then when Unveiling Grace came out by Lynn Wilder, I was yes. like, oh, another book. I would already read so many of them, but I thought, well, I'll um, read that. But anyway, that's just a little side note. That was a great book, though. <laughs> it is a great book. It, it has, I, yeah, I've yeah. spoke with Lynn several times. She's been here three times. So. Oh, has she? Down here, so. Well, now before we uh, and our time time is zooming and by as yes. it usually does. <laughs> you're involved in a couple of different uh, missions, I guess we'd call them, mm -hmm. and uh, you you're Bikers for Christ. Yes. Tell us a little bit about what's involved with that and what you do. Well, Bikers for Christ is an organization that was started uh, internationally. And it's huge, isn't it? It's it's all over the entire world. Yeah. I didn't know that when I joined. <laughs> I was like, oh, we'll just join this biker group. Because your know. husband's a biker. Right? Yes, so. he has a Harley. And you're and a passenger. And I ride on the back, and I pray a lot, and listen to my music, <laughs> okay. I hold still. Yeah. <laughs> But I love it. But we've gone out and done a few outreaches and different things. Sure. We used to go to dinner every Monday night somewhere in town. As a group? As a group. Oh. We, we have our biker jackets Take on. Take over the restaurant. <laughs> we do. We took over restaurants and people see us praying. They hear us talking about the Word of God and they'll come up and ask us things. And for, so it's really an outreach just going to dinner, just wearing your outfits. your colors and yeah. it's very respectful and, and it says Bikers for Christ on the back of your jacket. Yeah, and so people ask, they ask questions. So yeah. it's it's a great ministry and we, yeah. we go to the Dixie Area Detention every other Saturday. As and a group. And, as and, a group. And teach. And and minister to the kids. We pray over them and uh, just kind of tell stories. Some probably wonderful stories that have come out of that. People that Amazing. have come to Christ. And Amazing from the bikers, the, uh, the fellow bikers that are there, because it's men and women, yeah. and we can go in and, and... And their stories individually must be fantastic, oh. let alone what they're doing. But they're insane. But how they've come from, probably from various backgrounds, not necessarily Mormon, but definitely... De Back right. And what a joy. I spent many tears listening to their stories in that group. I'm like, wow, I didn't As know that. As sharing to these people. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And they've, we've actually had a few of the guards come to Christ and come to our church. Because they've listened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because they have to sit in the room and listen. And they've come, they've come to our the church. The Word is powerful, isn't it? Uh, it is amazing. And it's just once you start understanding that, that the joy and the freedom that, that comes. And you've also been involved in, with Calvary Chapel in, mm -hmm. in, in setting up churches maybe in, or have been in some cities. Tell yes. Tell us about that. Yes, we've had some of our assistant pastors and our youth pastors have gone on to start other churches. There's one in Hurricane Valley. And these are Calvary Chapel. This is Calvary Chapel in Hurricane. Uh -huh. Dustin was our assistant pastor. Now he's pa senior pastor there. Yeah. And we've just kind of come alongside and pray and help as they've gotten going. Support the group and stuff. And then there yeah. was one started in Richfield, Calvary in Richfield. Yeah. And shout out to Ryan and Sarah. <laughs> and one in Kanab, our worship leader started a church out there, started a Bible study, and now it's a church. They just celebrated their two years to today. You church know, it's funny there. how Mormons think that the, we Christians just kind of say, okay, I'm saved, <laughs> and that's it. I'm gonna stay home, watch football, and uh, just take it easy, sit back. I have extra weekends, I have my uh, 
10% raise that I don't have to pay tithing anymore and I'm just uh, free and easy. Right. Doesn't seem to work that way, does it? Not really. <laughs> not really. God which... grabs your heart and what? <laughs> I, I'm glad it's not like that because, sure. frankly, now I love going to church. <laughs> That's so... I can't miss it. I mean, it's just exciting. Yeah. I love to go. In fact, my husband and I love to go so much. We will get in the car and drive down to Riverside, California, and go to Greg Laurie's <laughs> church in really? Harvest. Oh, uh -huh. really? And we'll, we'll stay Saturday night in a hotel, get up, go to church, go to his wonderful bookstore that's like, I died and gone to heaven, <laughs> in their bookstore. I'll have to make that trip. And mm -hmm. then we're back by 8 o'clock. You can do it really nice from St. George. <laughs> oh, quick trip, huh? <laughs> Yeah, we just leave on a Saturday, back on Sunday afternoon, or Sunday uh -huh. evening because we like to spend some time in the bookstore after. <laughs> so tell us, just kind of summarize your journey, how, what the joy you've had and, oh, and the man. freedom. And, uh, well, well, and at the same time, as I always do, if you've got something you want to say to your family or friends. Oh, I love my family and friends. and We love Mormons, don't we? <laughs> I, I do. I actually, I think I love them more because I feel like... Oh, we have a heart for them, don't we? I know that they deserve to be saved. Everyone deserves to be saved. Yeah. God created all of us. And He didn't just like, oh, we were just learning about Jonah in Nineveh today. Yeah. And <laughs> just from our assistant pastor today. And it's like everyone in Nineveh deserved to be saved. All the Mormons, just any Catholic, any, you know. They all deserve. Yeah. Just the same as I was lost. Yeah. But now I'm free. That's the difference, maybe. And I have, I feel like it massively changed my life. Oh. In the, the chains are gone. Yeah. They're literally gone off my life. I have freedom in Christ. I have, and I live a true joy, a true peaceful life. It's not perfect. No. Absolutely not. But I live mostly a no fear life. Yeah. There's a trust, right? Mm -hmm. A yep. faith and a trust that what God has done for us, we couldn't do it for ourselves. Oh. We're, we're in His debt, I mean, we're, we're in His mercy mm -hmm. and the grace that He's given us. Once you learn that grace, yeah. then I have the assuredly. I, I never had that before when somebody would say, oh, do you I think sure. you're going to heaven? I never well, could I answer that. So. I think I've done enough. Now, I like the word hope. Yeah. That I, I like other people to have hope yeah, right. in Christ, but yeah. For me, I can have the assuredly that I am saved. I am saved. But yes. my friends can have the hope that they can be saved too, yeah. but it's for each person to say that I'd they are saved. I'd love to have them come and ask us about it. Wouldn't that be great? I love my family. Well, Kara, thanks so much for sharing. What a rich well, you. story you have. And I just think there's such a joy in what we know about our, our good Jesus. Well, nothing suffering. extravagant, but yeah. God is amazing. He's good. And thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.